The testimony or testimonies that you are about to hear are by Shiny Moa. After this, Jesus took me to heaven. I tell you, heaven is beautiful. The first place Jesus showed me in heaven had flowers. The flowers were so beautiful. There are no flowers as beautiful as the ones I saw in heaven. They had a sweet smelling aroma. They smell different from the ones on earth. After seeing these flowers, we continued. We went forward, and I saw some mansions. Now this was a different place in heaven. This was what Jesus refers to when he said he went to prepare a place for us. These mansions were beautiful, so beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen a place as pretty as heaven. It is paved with gold, shining so bright. So beautiful, I cannot describe it. I don't know what to use on earth to compare to what I've seen in heaven. Nothing compares to heaven. It is so bright, everywhere is bright and shiny. I saw the mansions, and they were all so tall, so beautiful, and so shiny. The mansions in heaven have doors, but the doors are wide open. The windows are wide open. You can see right through it. It is so beautiful. When I was with Jesus in heaven, I forgot all about the things on this earth. All the worries, all the things about earth that were in my mind disappeared. No more worries. I even forgot that I still have a life on earth. I forgot about my son on earth. I had forgotten about my husband, my mom, my sisters. I did not even think about how I had gone and worshiped God on earth. I did not miss any of these because heaven is so beautiful. When I saw how beautiful heaven was, I did not want to come back to earth. At that time, Jesus told me to come back, but I said, I'm not going back. Jesus said, You have to go back, but I told him I did not want to. Then Jesus said to me, You have to go back. If you don't, your body will die. He said, If you die, no one will love your child. If you die, your husband will remarry, and his new wife will not love your child like you do. You have to go back. At that time, I thought in my heart that I had forgotten about my child and my husband who were still on earth because heaven was so beautiful. Jesus told me to come back because of my child. So I decided to come back. Well, this is my testimony of going to heaven and hell. Jesus had commanded that I give these testimonies. Jesus took me to these places to see what they look like so I can come back and tell people about them. Jesus wants people to know that hell is real and that heaven is real. These are not my words, but the words of Jesus. Hell is real even if you are a non believer. Even if you do not believe in God, I tell you that hell is real. You cannot escape hell if you don't believe. Jesus is the judge, whether if you're dead or alive. Don't think that you can run away from Jesus. You cannot. On Saturday, February 25th, at about 5:10 or 5:15, I was reading the Word of God and I was fellowshipping with God. I had been reading the Word of God for about an hour and a half to two hours. So when I was done, it was almost seven. It was about 6.55. I was tired, so I laid down. I closed my eyes, but I did not fall asleep. At that time, I heard a woman's voice. She was crying really loud and she was screaming. Suddenly, God opened my mind and I saw hell. This part of hell that I saw, there were many people there crying and weeping. I saw a white man. About the age of 55 to 56, he said in English, No time to repent, no time to repent. After this, I did not see Jesus anymore, so I thought that was all he was going to show me. I was about to fall asleep when I heard a woman screaming again in agony. This woke me up. I was scared and I was trembling. At that time, I saw Jesus again. This is the second place Jesus took me to see. In this place, I saw a Hmong lady. Jesus said, This Hmong lady is someone who drank the blood from the finger of her lover. Jesus allowed this woman to talk to me. So she told me that she had made a promise with her boyfriend when they were still alive. 
they had drank each other's blood from their fingers. But this promise that she made, she thought she had made it with her boyfriend. In the flesh, this is what she had thought. By doing this, they were promising each other that if they were not allowed to get married, and if one of them dies first, that the other one will come back to get the one who is still alive. This woman told me that this kind of promise is not with your boyfriend or girlfriend, but she told me that this kind of promise is of the devil. She said when you do this, you are not making a promise to the person you love, but you are making a promise to the devil. This is the work of the devil. Now I tell you that drinking each other's blood and committing suicide by taking drugs are the work of the devil. I saw people around this woman, they were also weeping and in pain. Jesus allowed this woman to speak to me so I would know what happens when Hmong people drink each other's blood just so they can be together after they die. If you have a former boyfriend or girlfriend who has passed away, but your heart is unstable because you want to be with that person spiritually, then you must come to Christ. If you are already a believer and this is happening to you, pray to God for him to help you so that the devil cannot make your heart unstable anymore. After that, Jesus took me to the third place in hell. I saw some people there. These were business people and they were weeping really hard because they were burning at their feet. I saw that there were glue stuck to them. Now these are not regular glue. These actually burn them as they are stuck there. These things that appear to look like glue are sticky and hot and they cause the people terrible pain. They wept bitterly. I asked Jesus why is this happening to them. Jesus said the glue that sticks to them are things of the world that they love. It is the things of this world that is sticking to them. When those people were still alive, so many of the things of these worlds stuck to them, just like these glue, so these people were not able to come to Jesus. After this, I did not see Jesus anymore. Again, I thought he was not going to show me anything else. But then I heard another voice screaming and weeping. Then I saw Jesus again. He came and stood next to me. Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Tell my people about hell. There is a hell. He has taken me to this place to show me so I can come back and tell them that hell is real. Jesus said, Go. Go tell my people. After this place, again, I did not see Jesus anymore. My vision went black. I thought Jesus was not going to show me anything else. But I heard the loud scream of a woman and it made me really scared. I could feel the fear in my body. At this time, it was about 8 o'clock. Then I saw Jesus again. I saw a Mexican lady. There was a demon that looked like a bat. This demon was next to her and it was torturing her. He was hitting her. She was burning and crying so hard. She did not know what to do. She was helpless. She was speaking in Spanish, so I did not understand what she was saying. She was probably trying to express how much pain and agony she was in. Then Jesus said, this lady did the work of the devil when she was still alive on earth. She worshipped bat demons, so when she died, she comes to this place. If anyone believes in Jesus but still does these things, after they die, they will go to these places that Jesus has shown me. I tell you that hell is a terrible place. It is not good for anyone to go there. This is why Jesus wants me to tell his people whether if you go to a Christian Missionary Alliance Church or a Lutheran Church, Baptist, Trinity, Mormon, Catholic, or any kind of church on this earth. If you say you believe in Jesus, but you don't believe there is hell, Jesus wants you to know that hell is real. Anyone who ends up in hell will never get out. Repent when you are still alive and turn to Jesus with all of your heart. Those of you who have already believed in Christ, but you've given so much of your life and your time to business and not to Jesus. You are being pulled away by this world and you are drifting farther and farther away from Christ. You need to come back to Jesus. Jesus said for us to be satisfied and content with what he has already blessed us with. Don't let this world pull you away. You may claim that you are close to God, but in reality, 
you are far from Him. When you are alive, it is the world system that is sucking, pulling you away. But when you go to hell, there are these things that look like glue. These things will stick onto you and pull you like spider webs. You will be covered with these glue in hell. The Word of God says that you will reap what you sow. In Matthew 7:13, Jesus said, Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. If you don't carry your cross and follow Jesus, you will not go to heaven. If my testimony has touched you, if you used to love the Lord very much and you used to hear Jesus speak to you a lot, but now you realize that your life is not like that anymore, and now you realize that you're looking for entertainment, you're looking for earthly things that will just suck you away and pull you away, then you need to repent because you are far from God. He is still waiting for you. He still loves you. On January 19, 2011, at midnight, the Lord Jesus took me to hell, and I saw General Vang Pao in hell. This is the first place Jesus showed me. It was where General Vang Pao was. Jesus showed me what looked like pictures. The first picture he showed me was a picture of the General's military trucks. These trucks had big tires with big beds or spaces in the back of them to transport soldiers in. However, these military trucks were empty. There were no soldiers in them. I didn't see any. This was the first picture. After this, I saw a picture of the General when he was young, in his midlife, and when he was older. Jesus showed me these pictures. He showed it to me like a movie. Jesus showed me these pictures first, then after that, he took me to see the general in hell. When we got there, Jesus left me there with the general and the demons. There were as many demons there as there were the souls, and these souls were being tormented. The place where I was, I saw the demons tormenting General Vang Pao. Jesus told me that the general had seven wives. This is what Jesus said to me, but I have never really known about the life of General Vang Pao very well. There were Thai people, Laotian people, and Hmong people there. I didn't see too many Hmong people. Because the main person Jesus wanted me to see was the general. I saw demons breaking, bending, tearing, and twisting his arms and his legs. Now, when a person goes to hell, the demons don't care if you're in pain or if you're hurting. They don't care. There is no way out of hell, and I tell you, it is a place of torment. When I was in that place with General Vang Pao, I felt so crowded. I felt like I was in my mother's womb. I tell you, the general is in hell, and he is in agony. I love him very much. When the general was still alive on earth, I never had the opportunity to speak with him. I only saw him on videos and from afar. I love him very much because he is a leader for the Hmong people, and now he is in hell. It is very painful for the general. He cried and cried. I tell you that he is in agony in hell. I saw men who had many wives in hell, and they too are also in agony. The demons broke their arms and legs, just like how they broke the general's arms and legs, and how they bent his arms and legs. The demons would tear their arms and legs apart. I tell you, Satan is this evil. When I was there, I was very scared. I was in front of the general, but the demons did not touch me at that time because I was still alive. Jesus did not let the demons touch me, so they did not touch me. There would be eight demons tormenting one person like the general, so each person would have eight demons tormenting them, four on one side and four on the other. I tell you that you can be a king, but if you don't believe in Jesus, when you die, you will go to hell. It doesn't matter if you have a very nice funeral. It doesn't matter if it's General Vang Pao or one of us. If we don't believe in God, we will go to this place. I saw General Vang Pao being tormented by demons. They dragged him like one would drag an animal such as a chicken or a pig. The general did not want to be there. He tried to escape that place. 
but the demons would grab his foot and drag him right back there. After the demons break and bent the arms and legs of these people, they would release worms, and each of the worms were about a yard long. The demons released these worms to eat the bodies of the general and the people there. When the worms ate them, the demons released the worms to eat me as well. They started eating from under my foot. It was very, very painful. The pain ran up all the way to the top of my head. At that time, the demons released the worms to eat us. But because I was still alive and not dead, my flesh did not disappear. But the souls of the general and the dead people there, when the worms ate them, their flesh disappeared up to their necks, so that what was left was the general's head. I tell you, it is horrible. When Jesus took me to hell, he disappeared, leaving me there. I cried out, but Jesus said to me for me to stay there and that he will take me out in a moment. General Vang Pao and the others wept and I wept as well because I was so scared. After this, Jesus took me to the second place. The second place in hell that Jesus showed me had people who were liars. This place was as scary and horrible as the place I was before. Now the demons had cut off all the tongues of the people there. The more they screamed, the bigger the flames got. The louder they wept, the bigger the flames got. It was very, very scary. My body was trembling. I said to Jesus, Jesus, please take me out of here. But Jesus said, stay there for a moment. After this, Jesus took me to the third place. This third place is where lots of demons in hell would wait. Once a person dies and their soul falls to hell, these demons will take their souls to be tortured in the different places in hell which I've seen. There were so many souls going to hell. So many souls were falling down to that place. It was one after another and they kept falling down from earth. Once the souls get down there, the demons would take these souls and push them aside to the other demons to be taken for torment in the different places. I said to Jesus, Jesus, I'm too scared. Please take me out. Then Jesus lifted me up very high like a baby. I saw a light shining so bright lifting me up. When he lifted me up out of hell, I felt like a baby. I tell you, Jesus is real. He has taken me to see General Vang Pao in hell and the torments there are real. I'm not telling you this because I hate the general or that I just want to say bad things about him. But I'm telling you this so that people can be set free from their sins. Even if we are a king or a president, if we don't believe in Jesus, one day we will go to this place. It doesn't matter who you are. This is the end of my testimony. Thank you to Jesus for dying in my place. Thanks to Jesus for saving me. Thanks to Jesus for giving me the opportunity to visit hell so I can come back and tell his people about it. Jesus, you are so good. I thank you for giving me time. I thank you for my life, for allowing me to be close to you. Jesus, I pray for you to anoint these testimonies, that these would not be my words, but yours. I pray, Jesus, that you will anoint this message, that whoever listens or hears it will be touched by it. I pray that these words will go into their hearts and will remain in their hearts. I pray that people will repent and that they will return to you, for you are the God who died for them.